Hey, welcome back. Um, got on my bench here, Harman Kardon HK3480 uh, receiver. I bought this on eBay. I got a good price for it. It was uh, $40 plus shipping. So uh, I was quite pleased with that. And it's quite a brute too. It's got, uh, I don't know what it has for specs, but it's 100 or 120 watts a channel or something like that. It's ridiculous. Um, I tried it out. Hooked up a decent pair of speakers, and uh, yeah, this thing kicks, kicks out the power, and it sounds good. It sounds really good, but not a, not as all as it seems because uh, it has a minor problem that I want to address before I actually put it in its final resting place to be used. Uh, you know, just an, as an everyday amp for. Um, I want to have it tied in with my 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 television, so I get. Uh, decent sound out of the, uh, the programs I watch. But it does have a problem and I noticed that when I turned it on it has a, a DC offset on the output speaker terminals and uh, you can hear it's quite prominent when I uh, I don't have the speakers hooked up now but uh, when I had it you can hear it when you switch the speakers on and off. You can hear the DC component switching. So took the lid off and when I was taking the lid off I was kind of disappointed because um, I had a lot of different different kind of screws holding it together which suggests to me that somebody's been in here before and uh, I wasn't too careful about the screws they got them all mixed up and uh, yeah somebody had been in here uh, I'll show you what's going on it might have been repaired and it might have been recapped because um, yeah, I'll shut this off I need to turn it on by mistake if you can see this but I'll get my pointy stick around these capacitors the glue has been broken and there's no glue in the capacitors whatsoever they're clean and they're not glued down. They're uh, the old capacitors have been removed, and, and these ones have been replaced. It looks like somebody did a decent job of recapping it. They put you know, decent audio capacitors in there. These two main filter caps, as well. The glue has been broken, and uh, looks like these caps have been replaced as well. I was looking here. Well, maybe not. It looked like maybe somebody replaced one of the power transistors, or maybe not. But anyways, there's a big uh, problem here. Something's missing from the remote. So the screw's gone, and then you had the the five RCA jacks for the, the video. What do we got? Video one, video two, video three, and then a monitor. But if you look on the other side, there's no board. Somebody broke the board off. And you can see it's been broken because these uh, there's little pieces of copper and uh, PCB left behind. So Somebody's been in here, removed uh, the video component of this receiver, and uh, left it as a, just a purely audio receiver, which is fine by me because that's what I wanted. I, I wanted a receiver that was uh, pre all the 5.1 and 7.1 garbage, you know, the THX and all that stuff. I don't want that. I wanted just a pure uh, two channel audio for driving speakers. Okay, so let's turn this on. Turn down the volume. Minus 80 dBs, minimum. Let's check this here, we got speakers one is enabled. I don't know if you can see this. I'll put this where you can see it. Able to see that? Yeah, you're good. Uh, 
let's check the left channel. Let me put my hand on something live. So we have 350, 360 millivolts DC output on the left channel. Is that a negative? Yeah, it was a negative voltage on the. Let's check the right channel. And we got about 15 millivolts on the right channel, which is acceptable. But the left channel is not acceptable. Something's wrong with the left channel. Now, I could use it as is and just ignore it. Or I could go out there and try and find that fault. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to set the amplifier bias. Uh, I'm going to go through and set the amplifier bias instructions here. A couple of uh, connectors on the on the main board, and uh, adjust for uh, 21 millivolts plus minus five percent. So I'll go through and do that, and then I'll see. Not, and I'll see how that. Uh, affects the, uh, the amplifier. Okay, stand by. So I went through and I uh, adjusted the amplifier bias, both channels, and to be honest they weren't very far out. They were within 10 millivolts of the spec. I'm just going to check again on the outputs here, what we have for I still have about 300 millivolts. It's jumping around quite a bit. Negative 300 millivolts. Let's check the right channel. And it's at point, uh, 9 millivolts and it's steady, holding steady, which is fairly good. That left channel concerns me though. On uh, something going on there. I don't know if uh, this uh, PCB board has a spill on it. I'll fucking get it up in here and you can have a look. Uh, let me see if I get the camera adjusted. Okay, let's see. I'll zoom in a bit. Right here, there's a liquid spill. It's dry and crusty. It's not very big. It covers. It doesn't cover a large, a large area. It covers probably these two jumpers. And there's a little bit on this resistor, a little bit on this cap. So I'm gonna clean that up. Hopefully that is part of the problem, or the problem. Also what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and check the schematic, make sure they got the right values in there. I'm sure they do, but you never know. Uh, then I want to look and see all these values of these transistors to make sure that they've, uh, they're all originals. Okay, I've gone through and checked out the left channel with a voltmeter and I compared voltages with uh, you know with the right channel and there's definitely an imbalance there that's throughout the entire circuit it starts starts here at the very beginning right this uh, this blocking capacitor and there's a imbalance between the two channels but I believe it's part of the feedback loop here is uh, is is causing this imbalance in the beginning of the front the front end because there's an imbalance throughout and uh, I checked all the resistors 
and they're all within within tolerance. Uh, we have new capacitors in there. I'm assuming they're good. Now, I went through and checked a bunch of the transistors. I don't see anything wrong with with them with you know just using a vol uh, voltmeter or ohmmeter. Uh, check the diodes. There's three diodes in the circuit. They all seem okay. You got to remember, there's plus minus 54 volts on the power rails feeding this amplifier, so there's a lot of potential difference between you know the positive and negative. We were talking 110 volts, and uh, I believe I found the source of the problem. It is Q309, which is right here, and the reason I believe that's the one is because right now I have a voltmeter hooked up to the output of the amplifier and I'm measuring uh, you know 30 320 some millivolts output but when I hit this with the cold spray where's 309 309 oh maybe it wasn't 309 Which transistor was it then? Yes. There's 301. Now I've got like a 700 millivolt. So transistor 301 is the one that has the most temperature effect. I have a feeling one of these transistors is leaky. So what I've done is I've uh, ordered transistors or new transistors and I'm going to replace uh, 301, 307. Because that one seems to have the most effect. When I hit 301, it goes wild. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to replace some transistors in here. I think that's the, the cause of the leaky transistor. I'm just going to run it like this as is for now. And uh, when those transistors get here, I'll replace them. You know, it's a lot of work to take this board out. It's pretty much have to disassemble the whole amplifier to get this board out and to get access to the bottom to do any soldering. So I'll just leave it as is, run it as is for now. It doesn't, it's not heating up. Nothing's hot um, with regards to, uh, you know, just sitting here idling for, for several minutes and nothing's hot. So I'm just gonna let it run it like this. It sounded good. I tried it the other day, so when those transistors get in, I'll change it. Okay, uh, last time I left off, this a few weeks back, we were looking at this uh, receiver, and uh, if I remember correctly, it had a DC offset at the output of about 300 millivolts or so. I got the transistor here I salvaged from another unit, so I'm going to attempt repairing this. But first I wanted to confirm that DC offset one more time before I tie into this thing because uh, I'll need to remove the back panel and pull out the main board to get at, uh, at the uh, bottom of this because I pretty much exhausted my uh, troubleshooting from the top with a voltmeter and uh, I use it. I just wanted to confirm one more thing here before. Okay, so I switched it on. We got about 340 millivolts offset. I just wanted to apply some heat to which one? Q309. Oh, you can see this. Let's try Q309 first. So 
going down. Not that much, it's pretty stable. This one here is 303, I think. I can hardly read the board, it's so hard. This one says stable. And then Q301, which is the suspect one, I thought. There, it's dropping like a rock. It's going way down. Now, what is this one? Let's try this one. And the drivers, nothing. Another driver. Nothing. So I'm pretty sus sure it's that Q301. Let's pop that transistor out and test it for leakage. I really don't have a good transistor test today. But I do have a rudimentary one, so we'll try that. Uh, i got to take this board out. Okay, give me some, some time here. All right, I think I tracked it down. It, actually, it wasn't too bad taking that uh, board out. It only took me about five, six minutes. 20 some screws and uh, just came out pretty easy. <clears throat> now, I pulled out this transistor, which I marked it to make sure I didn't mix them up. This one here, it tests fine on my tester. It tests fine on the diode checker on my VOM. And uh, if you check it for resistance reverse, bias on the diodes, I'm getting a small amount of leakage, maybe pff, half a mega ohm, one mega ohm. So I think that's what's the problem, and I think it's pushing this amplifier into conduction. But uh, I checked the, I checked the other diode, that I, or the transistor I'm going to put in, and it checks fine. So I'm just going to drop this in now, and... Uh, Probably reassemble. If I took the power transformer out, I wouldn't have to reassemble like I did. Oh, yeah, I still need to. Yeah, I'll reassemble it. Won't take me long. But I'll pop this transistor back in and then I'll uh, give you another update. All right, I have it put together enough that we can turn it on, test it, and measure if the offset's still there. I just got to turn on the isolation transformer and we have a standby light. Turn, turn on. Oh, we're about 55 millivolts, which is a huge improvement from before. Let's check the other channel. Where's the connector? It's heavy. The other channel is about 20, 24, and we are sitting at 55 roughly. Let's try doing the bias uh, adjustment, see if we can drop that. I need to flip it on its back. Okay, I've let this thing run for about half an hour just to heat it up a bit so I can do the bias adjustment and I'll tell you, this thing runs cold. This heat sink is room temperature. There's nothing on there. Um, the driver transistors are barely, you feel a little heat on them, but you know, idling current on this thing is pretty low considering it's a powerful amplifier. All right, so. Let's see what we got here. Seventeen. It's supposed to be twenty-one. Oh, that's Twenty sticking underneath. Try and do this with two hands. I 
Come on. I liked it better if they put the posts on the top of the resistor and then you can measure it there instead of this goofy connector that you can't. I suppose if I went and looked for it. Okay, we got a reading? 17? No. There we go. Okay, E21. Oops. Oh, that's fussy. right on. So what's the offset on this? Forty nine? Acceptable. Twenty? Result? I think I'm happy with that. It's a lot better than the three hundred and fifty millivolts from before. Now I think to make that better I have to go in here and start matching transistors, matching resistors and trying to get this amplifier perfect, but I don't think that's necessary. It's not going to be a listening room amp. It's just going to be doing audiovisual duties. Somebody went in here and recapped it though. Put nice audio caps in. And I can't understand why, because this thing is a low it's a low mileage unit. It's seen very little use. It's uh Those caps should have been good. It's only like 14 years old. So there was real no reason to go in there and cap it other than to improve its audio. Which I don't know if that would make any difference or not. But uh, I think we should do some performance testing on this. She's all back together. We got it uh, assembled. We got it hooked up to a function generator. Feeding it 40 hertz. Got it... Uh, connected to my 200 watt 8 ohm dummy load I expect these will be getting hot we're pushing 120 watts and I'm going to scope both channels just to monitor for clipping and distortion and I hooked up a speaker why not let's blast ourselves but I'm going to switch the uh, point of view here for you guys got all the bugs worked out of my get up here I am on a 40 hertz tone right now don't okay, just ignore this one Turn this up. I got a speaker here. It's working. Let's um, turn speaker two off so we don't have to hear it. And then turn this up to clipping. back off one notch. So I got 3.2 volts here but this is 10 times probe so 32. I'm measuring 23.4 volts RMS which calculates to 68 watts. That doesn't make sense. Let's uh, change the frequency here. Measuring 21.6 volts RMS on the multimeter. I'm not getting 120 watts, I'm getting less than 60 watts. 
Am I doing something wrong here? Let's shut off channel 2. Set for channel 1. Let's turn the 10 times probe off. Thirty point zero volts peak. Twenty one point two RMS. Yeah, that's correct. I wonder what's going on here. I'm getting a lot of heat. Well, let's check out some uh, frequency response then. Let's check the probe first. Probe looks good. It's calibrated. Okay, what are we at here? 240 hertz. Okay, let's take this up. Frequency. Looks like it might be overcompensated. I'm doing pretty good. All right, five kilohertz. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, starting to lose our edge. Really, it's not degrading very fast. And we're at 27 kilohertz. Starting to look like a sine wave right around 39. And I think we lost it there at 72. Let's do full power on this. I'm going to blow this thing up. Ooh, that's clipping there. That did not look good. We're getting 27 uh, volts RMS at 72 kilohertz. It's getting starting to get hot now. Okay, that was roughly 90 watts. We're still not getting our, uh, our full output. I wonder if it's because of that low, a low line. Let me check the line input here. Okay, my line was only at 106 volts. That probably explains the poor performance, but uh, I jacked it up to 120. Now we have 120. Let's do some more testing. Yeah, we're still getting the same 27.9 volts. Proved a little bit, but not much. 
Just gonna let this cook for a while. Probably about 80 watts right there. For channel. Well, it didn't blow up. Yesterday I filmed the last segment of this amp. I thought I was done with it. And then, uh, like I said, I filmed the last segment, buttoned it up, and I was gonna take this and put it in place and set it up. And then I got thinking, you know, it's still, still something not right with this and it's bugging me. And, uh, you know, it should be putting out 120 watts per channel and it's only putting out 60 with clipping. And then I started thinking, well, it doesn't make sense because if you have power supply rails for the power amps at plus minus 55 volts, it shouldn't be clipping at 37 or 36 volts or whatever I measured yesterday. It just doesn't make sense. So I got to thinking that maybe the problem is not in the power amp. Maybe the power amp's fine. Maybe the preamp is clipping. And what we're seeing is clipping within the preamp. So with this amplifier, a receiver, we can separate the power amp from the preamp and we can do individual tests on both. So that's what we're going to do today, right now. And I just wanted to uh, go over the schematic with you. So let me relocate the camera here and we'll go over it together. Okay, so this is the left channel. Um, and this is the problem transistor that I located and replaced, which took away, took away the DC offset on the output. This is the output here. Uh, pen's not working. Anyways, the thing that is bugging me is I tested this and I'm only getting 60 some watts um, at the output. And uh, we're going to test the plus minus power rails for plus minus 55 volts. This transistor, I suspect, got damaged because of. Uh, what somebody put on the input. Now, if you look at the diagram here, uh, where are we? This is your main input. And it goes through a 100 ohm resistor and then it goes to the, to the power amplifier, which goes through a 10 microfarad cap. So that's it's a direct shot into this transistor. I have a feeling somebody overloaded this transistor with too much energy either by static discharge or maybe intentionally pumping in some kind of signal that was over and above what this thing needs to see. And it didn't fry that transistor, but it damaged it to the point where it started leaking. That's why we had DC offset. Now, that's my theory anyway, I don't know. But here is the preamp out. And if I follow this, I can't even read that, it's so small. There's another resistor here. I think it might be a hundred. Let me get my other glasses on. Preamp out. Yeah, these are two 100, resist, well, 100 ohm resistors right here. And this is fed left channel, right channel. From what I can figure, this schematic's not very good. From what I can figure, it's fed from this op amp. And then it goes left in, right in. That's what those are marked. Now this op amp is precursed by, I think, I believe this is the volume uh, attenuator chip for the volume control. And then it comes from a couple of chips that do switching between the different inputs, these two chips. And then we have another op amp here. Um, this one seems to handle the outputs for the tape monitors. So if you follow the traces, it goes do, 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 tape monitor out. Sorry, tape monitor out. So this one, this op amp powers the outputs for the tape monitors. I have a feeling this op amp powers the input to the main amplifier. So I'm going to check for plus minus 15. Uh, all these chips operate plus minus 15. 
this one here, plus minus 15, plus minus 15, plus minus 15. So I'm going to go ahead and check the plus minus 15 uh, regulators. I think they were okay. I don't suspect anything wrong with them because uh, the amplifiers, the amplifiers, the receivers operating normally. But I'm suspecting that this op amp is maybe toasted. I can't imagine both channels being damaged the same in the same fashion to produce you know, a, a, a clean signal up into the, the point where it starts clipping at whatever this volume is here. So let's tie into this and then do some testing on the, on the preamp and the main amplifier. Okay, so we got the receiver on the bench, all hooked up, got our 8 ohm 200 watt dummy loads on both channels. I'm scoping both channels on the output. I have a RMS, true RMS, RMS voltmeter on one of the channels just to give us a quick indication of what kind of power output we have. Um, the scopes probes are set up for times 10. And I'm feeding a signal directly into the main amplifier instead of the CD input that I was doing yesterday. And we're going to bypass the preamp altogether. We're going to see what kind of what kind of uh, performance we can get out of this power amp now. So let's just go up here so you can watch the progress. Sorry. Right now we're filling we're feeding at a one kilohertz tone sine wave and we got 300 millivolts and on the output we are at 3.6 volt peak on both channels so let's turn up the amplitude 700 millivolts feeding it Feeding it with 1.3 volts peak. We're at 17.6 volts RMS, still no clipping. 21.9 RMS, that's where we were yesterday when we started getting clipping. Starting to get some uh, humming out of the power transformer here. Let's keep going. I'm at 3.5 volts input. And I'm getting clipping right there. And I'm measuring 31.7 volts RMS. Shut this down. Almost four amps. And there we go. That's our power output. 125 watts before clipping. So that's what's going on. There's nothing wrong with this power amplifier. I think the problem lays in the preamp. So we're going to go through and take a look at this preamp more carefully. Now we configured the uh, preamplifier. I'm feeding in a sine wave of uh, 40 hertz. Let's see if we can do this different here. Let's turn it up to a thousand. Okay, thousand hertz tone. Um, feeding in to the CD input, four volts peak, and I'm getting out of the preamplifier, both channels. 12.8 volts. 
there's no clipping. I got the volume control max. It's at plus 10 dB on the front uh, display. Uh, I'm not getting any clipping at all. Turn, uh, let's do this. Sorry. Aptitude. Keep turning this up. Right around here, I'm getting clipping out of the preamplifier. And I'm at 13.6 volts. So I'm not understanding. Let's take a look at channel. Get a good look at this clipping that I'm getting. I would say right about there. Twelve point four volts peak output on the preamplifier, no clipping. So I'm at a loss here as to why they don't play nice together. Let's try uh, connecting them back together again and see what happens. I'm not understanding what's going on here because they play nice when they're separated but they don't play nice together. Let's see what we got here. I got the preamp and power amp connected together again. I'm monitoring the output of the power amplifier. And I got a thousand hertz tone on it. Turn this up to clipping is yeah, let's get the better better look at this. There's clipping. And I'm reading on my RMS voltmeter 29.8 volts. 29.8. Where's my calculator? See now I'm only getting 111 watts channel before it starts clipping so I'm not understanding why there's so much discrepancy and inconsistency with this amplifier. I thought maybe it was the level of input I was feeding into it but I'm feeding a 900 millivolt signal in. Let's turn this down and feed in a 1.5 volt signal and see what difference this makes. Crank it up. Right there. Now I'm getting 31.8. power transformer just buzzing away. 31.8. That sounds more like it. Yeah. So I'm getting now 126 watts per channel on 8 ohm load. So I guess my first initial test I didn't have the right signal feeding in. But I, I still don't understand why it was clipping at 60 watts. That's a strange one. Maybe it was because I had the back cover off and it wasn't grounded properly. Um, I kind of highly doubt that, but wow. Okay, well this is 100% and it's going to go get installed today. Alright, I think I figured out why my initial test, power output test, failed. It was because I had this plugged into a my isolation transformer and I have a feeling when I loaded it up with power, it sagged down the, the voltage on the uh, on the incoming line and it uh, dropped to the point where it could only produce 60 watts. The last test I did with it uh, today, where it worked fine, I had it plugged directly into the line and uh, I had no issues. So I think that was my problem. It really threw me for a loop. And uh, now that I think about it, it was kind of a dumb mistake on my part. But uh, anyways, I've got a nice, fine-sounding amplifier producing full output, and uh, we're going to install this and get it uh, 
get it working. So thanks for watching.